G'day guys and gal, it's no secret that I enjoy the lighter fun parts of Warhammer 40k lore. Those moments are few and far between, but when they hit, they hit hard. And give me a cheeky little giggle. You know, the kind of giggle you get when your uncle plays tickle games with you then tells you not to tell your parents. However, I absolutely love the brutal darkness of the 42nd millennium and the absolutely horrid fates that some of our characters find themselves in, either deserving or not. It's amazing how creative some of the lore writers get when they describe a fate worse than death. Before we get started, as they say, breakfast is the most important meal of the day, but for a lot of us, breakfast is where we all speed run diabetes. All the cereals just seem to be so high in sugar and carbs. This results in you having a sugar crash around midday and you just not being at your best. Two pretty not ideal things. But what if I said you could get the taste, texture, sweetness, and joy from your favorite childhood cereals without the sugar load? That's where Magic Spoon comes in. A high protein, only five grams of net carbs and zero grams of sugar that are delicious and help you hit your macros. As someone who cannot be stuffed cooking a brekkie in the morning, but also works out pretty much every day, being able to swap in the high protein -y goodness from Magic Spoon has been a game changer. And if you still don't trust it, more plates, more dates, arguably the most knowledgeable man in the fitness industry has worked with and promotes Magic Spoon as well. So to get $5 off any order, use code MAJORKILL or click the link below. And if you somehow don't end up being happy with your order, then Magic Spoon does a no questions asked refund. Now that is a company that backs their product. Cheers to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the five worst fates specific characters have found themselves in. This won't be like a general fate that could happen and has happened to multiple people, but very specific fates that a character or small handful of characters are enduring, have endured for a long period of time, is destined to re-endure, or has died enduring. Uh, let's get into it. The Grey Knights are Chaos's biggest pain in the ass. Demon hunters who are specialized at cock blocking the hordes of hell wherever they find them. A large amount of epic demonic incursions, often led by demon Primarchs, have been stopped by the intervention of Grey Knights. So it's no surprise that Chaos fucking hates them and likes to ruin their shit whenever they can. None have had their shit ruined harder than Epimetheus, a legendary Grey Knight and one of the founding members of the Order. There are few who are as dignified or highly regarded as Epimetheus. Originally a dark angel, this badass fought in the Horus Heresy and was so decorated that he was handpicked as one of the founders of the Grey Knights. After the Heresy, to demonstrate his selflessness, he volunteered to become the eternal guardian over a Chaos artifact, going into permanent stasis next to it that would only release him when the artifact was threatened. 10,000 years later, Abaddon arrived to claim it and Epimetheus awoke to stop him. Despite a good effort where the Grey Knight was able to defeat a Lord of Change, the Grey Grandmaster ended up being captured and holy shit, fucking rough dude. Epimetheus had his black carapace torn out, ouch, his tongue removed, his eyes and mouth soon shut with demonic stitchings that would never stop hurting, and he had his gene seed removed. To make it worse, he even had a blank grafted to his back so that not only can he not use any psychic powers to somewhat alleviate his pain, but his mind is in constant agony from his power being suppressed. This dude fucking hates his life. He has been shamed in mind, body, and spirit. There is also a theory based on some fluff in recent times that he has been turned into a Slaneshi demon host, an even worse fate than what he was currently enduring. I don't think there has ever been such a noble, dignified character suffer such a horrific, agonizing, and humiliating fate as Epimetheus. Abaddon is just such an asshole. While this next fate wouldn't be as painful as Epimetheus, it's still horrifying in how permanent it is. During the Siege of Terra, the traders launched a number of drilling machines with the idea of boring under the palace's defenses and popping up amongst the back line of defenders. Each machine was full of Astartes and mortal crew. However, their plan of attack had been anticipated by Rogel Dawn, who had set a pretty horrifying trap. Instead of mines or other fatal devices, Rogel had set up these uh, like cement traps so that each drill got completely bogged down and trapped with absolutely zero way of going forward or backwards. They're also very deep underground. I'm talking kilometers. So they had no chance of being dug out, calling for help or escaping. For all intents and purposes, they were now trapped there for all 
all eternity. Now for the mortal crew, this wasn't so bad. You could either starve to death pretty quick, get eaten by the Astartes, or blow your own brains out. However, for the Space Marines, this was pretty horrible. It takes a very, very long time for a Space Marine to starve to death or die of dehydration. They are also honor bound not to shoot themselves. Hence, they would have to endure an extremely slow, painful, and inevitable death as their body broke down around them, all the while being trapped in a very claustrophobic box. Even the ones that would activate their Susan membrane, that being a gene seed that allowed them to hibernate, would still slowly die over a few centuries, as this form of hibernation is inferior to machine stasis. Overall, a horrific twist of fate. You are a gene-enhanced superhuman, a war god. You are keenly anticipating your attack, the look of shock on the defenders as you emerge amongst their backline. Then in a split second, that is stolen from you as your machine is bogged down deep under the earth. You quickly realize that your moment of glory has turned into your tomb. Even the most stoic of Astartes would shit their pants. There was always going to be a Dark Elder entry on this list, but the plot twist is that it was also a Dark Elder that suffered the horrendous fate. Introducing the Dark Elder Succubus, Eutricia Glhyrius. What the fuck? Now the succubuses can suck and fuck just as hard as they can brutally massacre you, often one after the other in no particular order, which can result in them making some enemies. Despite being hot as hell, Eutricia was a massive bitch, a spoiled brat who would erupt into frenzied rages and start flaying people around her whenever something went slightly wrong. After she had killed a rival succubus, she entered the shit books of a homunculus called Sec. Now you really don't want to be in the shit books of a homunculus. They are the Dark Elder's mad geniuses who invent all the crazy ways to cause as much pain and humiliation as possible. You just don't really want to fuck with these guys. In her arrogance, Eutricia sought out the aid of Sek to help her fight against the Imperium. Sek agreed, as it gave him the opportunity to enact vengeance. During the battle, Sek put his plan into motion and infected Eutricia with a powerful mutagen, which turned the beautiful warrior queen into a disgusting, oversized, out of proportion monstrosity, akin to a chaos spawn. In this form, she would live in eternal agony. Unfortunately for Eutricia, she survived the fight against the Imperium in her new ugly form, and was enslaved and taken to the arena of Komara to fight for the crowd's entertainment. Her suffering is so great that even being in her presence revitalizes other the Dark Elder. Oh how the mighty have fallen. If there is a lesson to be gained here, it's not to ever fuck with or piss off a homunculus. This next one is pretty interesting, but you need to think of it in a bit of an abstract way. Lucius the Eternal. Now Lucius looks like he is having a pretty good time. He is blessed by Slanesh, cannot really be killed, and has a big spooky smile. But beneath all that, his fate is actually horrific. Lucius is a warrior, a scumbag asshole, but a warrior all the same. He likes to have honorable jewels to prove his superiority over others. However, due to the nature of his blessing, or curse, he can never rematch those greater than him. See, if he kills his opponent, then he was just better in the first place and whatever. But if his opponent kills him, which often happens, then he is reborn through his opponent and kills them due to hacks. He never has the chance to get revenge or prove his superiority over them. Whenever someone defeats Lucius, they are forever the superior warrior. Even in life, this is just how it was. Saul Tarvitz bested him and he was never able to reclaim that pride. Sharokin got him as well. Lucius is just such a weak little bitch, as whilst he likes to think he is the galaxy's greatest swordsman, there are hundreds or even thousands of others who are better, and he will never be able to prove otherwise. Think about it like this, if your mate beats you in a game, you can rematch them indefinitely until you start consistently winning, hence you are the better player now. You get the joy and satisfaction from improving and overcoming. Lucius will never get that satisfaction, and that satisfaction is all he wants. When Lucius was beaten by Garviel Loken, but then overcame him in the second fight sometime later, he was brimming with pride and glory. He felt like a million bucks. But for 10,000 years, he has never felt that way again. Any negative fate that is eternal is a cruel fate indeed, but I honestly can't think of anyone who deserves it more. Fuck you, Lucius. Now, I bet a few of you are like, what about the Damuncula bar? And I agree, that was pretty horrifying. For those of you that haven't bleached your eyes and ears, the Demoncula Bar was an experiment by the Iron Warriors where they kidnapped women, pumped them full of growth hormones and steroids, and then raped the shit out of them by shoving Chaos Marine aspirants up their orifices. They would then gestate and breed them back out as full space marines. The breeding process would rip the Demoncula Bar woman open, and then they would just stitch them back together and repeat. And 
yes, fuck, fuck that, that's disgusting. However, the fate was reasonably short-lived, as Uriel Ventress was able to put the women out of their misery. So the Demuncular Bar is an honorable mention for sure, but I would take short-term agony over the horrible forever fates that I have discussed. The last character to suffer horrific fate for this video, and probably the worst fate in the entire universe, is none other than the God Emperor of Mankind. Imagine, you are the most powerful being in the galaxy. You raise humanity up to their zenith, reunite your scattered race, and dominate the galaxy as you prepare to shepherd your people into a golden age of psychic enlightenment, as you set in motion your plan to achieve everlasting victory over the gods of hell, only for your fucking retard sons to trip over their own chromosomes and ruin everything. To make matters worse, the only way you can remotely keep your empire afloat is to sit on the galaxy's most horrific pain engine, a throne so agonizing that even the Dark Elder are like, holy shit dude, that is fucked. On that pain engine, your sanity shatters, and your body withers away, but if you give up, then your entire empire gets viciously sodomized by demons. All the while, you are powerless to stop your empire from being seeded with corruption as your policies are twisted from secular and enlightened into becoming religious dogma, where entire worlds are dedicated to your worship. People who try to cling onto your original atheist teachings are publicly executed or tortured. Your dream has become a bloated rotten carcass, something that resembles the very thing you try to destroy. The future is bleak, your sacrifice will likely result in nothing, as after 1000, 10,000 or 100,000 years you will fail and everything will be darkness. That is the fate of the Emperor and... Holy shit, fuck that. Last little bonus fate, an honorable mention because I'm feeling a little generous. The fate of Saint Celestine. Now you might be like, what do you mean? Our glorious golden mummy is doing fine. I mean, yeah, she got killed by Khan, but she'll be back. Well, son, do you actually know what happens to Saint Celestine when she is killed? Do you know what she has to do to come back to life? It's not a simple vacation into the warp while she awaits the Emperor's girth to deploy her like a fucking Pikachu. Her psyche is fragmented and her memories are lost. She has to take a pilgrimage through a realm of torment and despair as she locates each of her fragments and puts herself back together. During this whole ordeal, Chaos is tempting her and can genuinely claim her soul, meaning there's a chance that we will inevitably end up with a Chaos Demon Prince, Saint Celestine. It's only after going through absolute hell, quite literally, that Saint Celestine will be able to return to the living once again. Now as this isn't exactly a fate, but more so the galaxy's shittiest resurrection process, I'll leave it as an honourable mention, but even the living saints aren't immune to the grim darkness of Warhammer 40k. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then pick up a nude cosplay calendar the calendars are for 2023, so in date, and there's literally just over 100 left. And if that isn't your vibe, we're running a buy a hoodie, get two t-shirts completely free for the 40k merch clearance sale. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more fateful content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.